Hello, my name is Ben Sayer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a source type in Reunion for Mac that will correspond with the recommendations of Elizabeth Schoen Mills for artifacts that are part of your or someone else's private holdings. Following the method that is outlined for creating source types um, on another post on the Genealogy Tools, I will step through those steps and create a new source type. And first thing that we're going to want to do is have a look at the fields that we have that we actually need for this source type. And the first thing that we need is an item ID, which is kind of a short name for it, a generic description of it, maybe an obituary news clipping or something like that. And then we need an artifact ID, uh, which is sort of like a title. It's a longer description of the item. Then we need the creation date if it's known. We need the owner, the current or last known owner of the item. We need that owner's location. We need the year owned if it's held by someone else. And we'll put um, other detail about the provenance of the item uh, within the detail field, the source detail. So let's have a look at the reunion preferences selection. And then down here on sources, and then we'll go into fields. And we're going to need to uh, rename a field. We will copy a couple, and then we'll create some new ones in order to support to support the creation of this new support this new source type for us. So let's start with item ID. We'll just go right through the list. There's not an item ID item in here, so we're going to click add field, and I'm going to type in item ID. And then we're going to leave the textile plane and not put quotes around it. And the GEDCOM tag that I'm going to use is ABBR for abbreviation. So that item, that uh, field for that is created now. Next we need a, an artifact ID. And that uses the GEDCOM tag of TITL for title. So let's have a look at the, the title source field and we can see we have one here with TITL and it has put quotes around it so we're going to create a new one that's like that except we're going to call it artifact ID and we're not going to put quotes around it because it may not be a title you can always insert those if the item artifact ID that you want has quotes just put it right in the field and we're going to use the TITL GEDCOM tag Next, we want a creation date, and there's a, there's a generic date field already in here, and it has a GEDCOM tag of date. So we're going to create one like that, except we're going to use Elizabeth Schoen Mills' uh, field name for it, which is creation date. And over in GEDCOM tag, we'll type D-A-T-E. And then we need owner, and there's already an owner field here. Now this one um, fits, is suitable for what we want, except that the, the idea that I have here is that I'll use names for these fields that correspond to the names that Elizabeth Schoen Mills uses, so that if I look something up in Evidence Explained or one of her quick sheets, I can look at that field name that she uses and then just select that source field from my list of fields if I already have it created. So in this case, I'm going to change this owner field name to current or, or last name or last known. And now it corresponds with the direction from Elizabeth Schoen Mills. Next we need an owner location field. And so there's a field like that called location of source. And we can see that it uses the LOCA GEDCOM tag. So we're going to want to use that tag, but create a new field. And we'll call, we'll call it owner's location. Again, to correspond with the evidence explained recommendation. And then LOCA was the GEDCOM tag, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go back and make sure. Yes, LOCA. So we have owner's location and using that GEDCOM tag. And then one more field we need to add is 
year owned. And in this one, we're going to want to add parenthetically if known, because if you are the holder of the artifact, then you would not want to populate the year owned because you would need to go in and update it every year if you were still holding it. So I'm going to add a field, year owned. And over here in the GEDCOM tag, I'm going to enter date. And then over here, I want to add a note to myself. And this is going to be if known and not held. I'm going to, I'm going to rent personally held. There. Now I've got a little instruction to myself in there. And now that we have all our fields created and the GEDCOM tags are set up so that our data will export, we'll go back over to types and we will add a type. And we'll use the, again, we'll use the naming that Elizabeth Schoen Mills recommends, and that is private holdings colon artifact. So that's the, how it's described in her book. So if you're looking in the in her books or quick sheets and see private holdings artifact, we can simply look through our source types or and uh, select the correct one. Now that we have that created, we'll add the fields that we just created or modified. And so we need item ID. We'll click add field. We need artifact ID. And then we need creation date. And then we need owner, which we changed to current or last known owner. And owner location. And year owned. One other thing that we may want to do here is to add a field that's just instructions and use the same naming. So, so the last item in the citation format is descriptive detail. And we'll put a note after it uh, that this should go in the source detail. And then just in case we ignore our note to ourselves, we're going to want to put a GEDCOM tag in here so that, that any, any things that are mistakenly entered in these fields will actually be stored out. So we're going to use the DETA, which is the GEDCOM tag for detail. And we'll add that to the end here. And now we have the source type that we want. So we can close this out. And let's have a look at how this would be used and the example from Evidence Explained is for a newspaper clipping. So let's take this individual, and this is an obituary in this example. So I'm going to select the death event, and I'm going to add a source by clicking Add Source down here, and New Source. And then you can see down in the list of sources that we have our new source type, Private Holdings Artifact. And we'll select that. And the item ID is GB Wooster obituary updated undated clipping from unidentified newspaper. The artifact ID is in Zella Lowell Stable Scrapbook. Let's spread these this out a little bit here so we can see more of our information here. Creation date is CA 1930 to 80. And the current or last known owner is privately held by Mrs. Stabler. And for the location in Elizabeth Schoen Mills' example, she's withholding the street address for this person and just entering the city and state. So to follow her format, I'm just going to type in it the same way. So I've got that entered. I'm going to 
squish this back down this field here so you can see what I entered. So this is just entered the way that Elizabeth Schoen Mills has the example. Uh, so you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily have to enter this this way. You could just enter in the city and state or whatever other location information or even the address if you wanted to. And then we've got year owned and we'll since this is held by someone else, she's got the year owned populated there. And then if we keep this expanded over here, we can see that we've got instructions to ourselves to include the descriptive detail in the source detail field. So I'm going to click Save. And then in this source detail, this is where we would type in any descriptive detail, especially the provenance of the item, um, who held it, when, and when they passed it on to other people. And obviously that's only if you know that information. So if we open this source item up and preview it, we'll see the information that looks very much like the format that is recommended by Elizabeth Schoen Mills in Evidence Explained.